that that form of shiva is called gangadhar shiva the shiva who has the flow of the ganga on his head but it's actually a very uh, very metaphorical uh, sort of communication of a deep aspect of yogic teaching how the shakti descends and then how it is transmitted you know so our mythology was created at a time our mythology all these mythological stories what is called puranic hinduism started to become popular around 5th 6th century you know ad that is 1500 years back because people were not having the intellect or even the shakti to grasp directly what the vedas and the upanishads and brahma sutras and yoga sutras were so they had to step down the teaching in a, and teach it in a story manner story form so the that whole gangadhar shiva is actually a process of yogic initiation which people don't know so i'll explain that uh, i'll explain that you know the story is very the story is very unique because ganga is actually the liquefied body of vishnu <laughs> so <laughs> yeah people don't know that so, you know the so this becomes even one level the story goes back deeper the story begins as most stories in india in our culture begin it begins with narada <laughs> so narada is he can travel in all dimensions all the spheres 24 spheres of existence he can travel so he is in one dimension and as usual he is singing and he comes across a tree and he finds there are these rows of people hanging upside down and they are horribly tortured and they are bleeding and so he is naturally very horrified and he asks them who are you people and they are like we are the spirit of the raga and he is like and what is this who has done this to you you did it it's my besura gate <laughs> because he is a deva narada is the only deva who is a rishi because he is a deva rishi his shakti is always there so when he was singing in that incorrect manner his shakti was actually impacting the energy of the <coughs> raga and he was destroying them so that became a very big learning lesson to narada that since you are a person at a higher level of vibration which is what a deva means you are a person who is glowing so if you are learning a skill at a higher level of vibration your responsibility is much more than if a person is learning a skill at a lower level of consciousness so a person at a lower level of consciousness mangling a raga would not matter much but a person who is enlightened or a person who is a deva if he starts getting that up, So it is a very big and important learning for him that people of higher <laughs> consciousness have greater responsibility when it comes to learning. So naturally, since I have created this now, what can I do to fix it? Then we need to have all the songs you are singing sung perfectly. So who is the perfect singer? Shiva. Shiva is the perfect singer, perfect dancer, is the perfect artist. all right so he turns up to kailas and he explains his problem to shiva shiva is very happy but there is a problem since it is now a healing process it is not a performance now he has to sing from a healing point of view so he says see a raga is always meant to be heard and not by the person singing it it is meant to be heard so that it heals the our song used to be sung so that it would spread community healing the bhajans or the raag or the chanting used to be so that the healing would spread to the community and even the classical dances used to be a very tricky and funny way in which the 
energy would be taken by the dancer from the shivalingam and passed into the social group you know, because she would send it out through various chakras if you see the way they move their hands you can see that it's coming basically from hara and it's coming from heart chakra so the energy used to be taken from the nataraja or the shivalingam and passed into the group it was a very sophisticated way of doing it so shiva says i'll do it but i need brahma and vishnu because they are the people who have the greatest attention they are the perfect listeners they can listen with full awareness anybody else their mind will wander in between but these two people can listen with full awareness so i need them to so not a problem for narada brahma is his father vishnu is his vishka devata so getting them to agree so shiva starts he starts singing singing as he sings the shakti that is flowing is so strong that vishnu goes into samadhi he identifies so deeply with the uh, with the raga with the power of the song that his rupa begins to melt his bodily form begins to melt because he is coming from form into formless the power of the shiva song is so strong that his bodily form is beginning to melt and brahma notices that and he sees that as the as the chakras are uncurling themselves and the energy the shakti is leaving so he puts his commander under vishnu's foot and as vishnu is basically melting it is being caught in the brahma's commander so that is the ganga so when she is in heaven she is known as the bhagirathi not the bhagirathi sorry the mandakini ganga is the triloka pata gamini she is the three fold path the three three world she connects she is the aspect of consciousness that connects the three dimensions of vibration the heavenly vibration the subconscious or the patala vibration and the human vibration which is guloka so when she is on earth she is known as ganga and when she goes to the unconscious or to the patala she is known as alaknanda so very often you will find sculptures the old classical sculptures of brahma on the head of or not brahma ganga on the head of shiva you will find the three heads in elephanta which is just off the coast here in mumbai all the guides will tell you that is ganga yamuna saraswati that is a sangam no it is not it is completely not it is a it is a complete what do we call it, it is a complete misconception it is a complete misconception it is the three forms of ganga ganga is the aspect of consciousness it is very rare for consciousness to be able to simultaneously reside in all three planes subconscious waking conscious super conscious ganga is that aspect of consciousness or that link between the various flows of consciousness in the kalidasa has described ganga as the liquid the liquid murti of shiva you know because shiva is basically vishnu vishnu is the tamasic aspect of the, the aspect of consciousness for shiva shiva is the sattvic aspect so and brahma is the rajasic aspect they are basically the same consciousness crystallized in different forms for different purposes so and in the yajurveda it is very clearly said rudra vishnu rudra himself is vishnu so ganga is actually ganga is actually shiva ganga is actually vishnu so it does not really matter which form you take it so the story about bhagirath of course everybody knows that his ancestors were doing an ashwamedha yatra you know vishwavidyalaya so they went and they irritated kapila muni that of course indra did it because he didn't want these people to succeed in their so he took the horse and he tied it near kapila muni knowing that these people will come and they will disturb it so when he got disturbed he like most rishis have a hot temper so he just basically cursed them 
and all of them they ended up as ash now if a rishi curses you vimalananda you know the guy who wrote the agora the kundalini series of books he used to say that it is actually blessing in disguise it is one of the best things that can happen to you because while yes there will be immediate suffering long term it will benefit you because the rishi shakti is so great that it will instantly just the fact that even a curse has touched you will be to your benefit so many generations before bhagirath they try to redeem to save that so bhagirath is told that is only actually one way and that is to bring the ganga down from heaven now in yogic terms yes that is the only way you can redeem yourself that is the only way you can save yourself you have to bring that higher level of consciousness down to your waking consciousness and that is not enough then you have to bring it down to your unconscious or your subconscious level all your levels of consciousness have to be raised or have to be divinized you you it is not enough that you are in touch with a higher level of consciousness because if your lower level of consciousness if your shadow if your unconscious side has not been processed it will lead to trouble so in a in a from a psychological point of view it is true all of us have to bring the ganga down and not only bring it down to our waking consciousness we have to bring it down to all our subconscious desires and we have to bring it to all our unconscious desires we have to the kal gustav jung he had said that you know enlightenment is not gained by imagining figures of light but by making the dark conscious whatever is repressed and suppressed and oppressed in you you have to bring that into the light of day you have to bring your awareness so that that ganga is that connecting link of higher vibration of higher consciousness it has to descend and the energy descends in our eight spiritual breath system first five breaths that is what we are doing remember <laughs> last three breaths what do we do from below up up and out up and out yes so we are also doing the same thing we are in waking consciousness we are constantly inviting the higher level of vibration to descend once that has happened that is not enough the so most most systems make that mistake they think that because they have now accessed or for a brief second in time they have touched the higher vibration they forget completely about the lower vibration even the lower vibration has to be raised even the lower vibration has to be made conscious the lower vibration has to be made conscious so ganga is not a dirty river that flows and comes out near ganga sagar that is a physical representation yes of course it helps but the way we have polluted that river i think we should just give up on that <laughs> ganga is not that river ganga is that flow of consciousness it is that flowing consciousness because when you access ganga you access always that energy which flows it really flows like water it comes down in a layer it comes down in a flow so the the person who becomes enlightened he is supposed to redeem his entire family also seven generations of the family also get at least the pap is gone even if they are not enlightened so that is the deeper thing behind this whole bhagiratya prayatna you know like bringing the ganga down and saving the ancestors at least your ancestors at least all the souls that are trapped in the permanent reincarnation if one person becomes enlightened seven generations get a fresh chance so then bhagiratya is told that you know there is only one way you have to bring the ganga down and the only person who can take that impact that shattering impact of ganga is the divine descends on the earth it is not fun for the earth you know people keep asking for avatar have you seen the avatar stories 
avatars always come when there is big trouble and the first thing they do when they come is more slaughter yes jesus was born but people don't realize that herod killed all the newborn babies in his territory at that time trying to same story with krishna kamsa goes around killing all the and avatara doesn't come without a heavy karmic price so let us not be in a hurry to wish for avataras to descend avataras come and matter the gone beyond all repair so that descent of consciousness will shatter if there is not a lot of preparation a descent of consciousness will shatter a descent of the higher consciousness will shatter physically shatter emotionally shatter very often people go mad even though the descending energy is much much gentler than the ascending energy very often the ascending energy because the ascending energy really comes from the lower levels it comes and it is angry and spitting it is the agni serpent you know it just comes rising up so that whole process of tapasya that you do is preparation for the descent of the energy so the tapasya that you do to shiva is preparation for the descent of energy you have to prepare your body you have to prepare your mind you have to prepare your emotion and most importantly your ki or your pranamaya kosha so that when the energy descends you can take it now on the net it is bouncing all over the place somebody went and did uh, aura photography of shri shri ravi shankar and they find that the camera couldn't capture the width of his aura so of course all the art of living people are very happy <laughs> you know but when you go and sit near an enlightened person you can take only according to your capacity so all sadhana is not because the sadhana changes you or transforms you the sadhana prepares you for the shakti that can enter you sadhana only increases your capacity to receive shakti in itself not important if you are naturally born with the ability to receive lot of shakti sat sadhana karne ki zarurat bhi nahi but that is not the case with most people so the sadhana is only so that we can increase our capacity to receive shakti so that is the meaning that bhagiratha spent thousands of years praying to shiva that please do this and who is shiva shiva is adi guru he is the param guru he is the first guru all gurus are basically accessing the guru is not even a person the guru is not even shiva the guru is a vibration it is a vibration which if it touches you can transform you it is a vibration which can teach you it is a vibration which can change you it is a vibration which can give you new possibilities it is actually called the guru field and shiva was the first person to access that vibration which is why he is adi guru and after that everybody who becomes a guru has to whether they know it consciously or unconsciously they are actually channeling it through shiva He is condensed consciousness. He is not really a person. Person. Shiva is not a person. Person. Though the, the Shakta people say that the Mahadevi touched him, but that is a different. So, when you want to bring the consciousness down, the transforming consciousness, the consciousness that can enlighten, which in short hand in our culture we call ganga when you want to bring ganga down you need the guru because you in your arrogance or your ignorance you try to bring it down it will shatter you <laughs> so you need the guru to take the shakti on the head first then he will release it in little streams that you can tolerate now many people get very upset about this 
because they want to be independent they want to achieve everything independently i remember i took some american friends of mine to elephant and nanda dhara shiva i was explaining they were very happy and i came to this point that the guru receives the knowledge or the guru receives the shakti and then that lady got very upset because she was a quaker now quakers are people they don't believe that there should be any priest between god man and god and i'm like yes i agree with you but guru is not priest you know for them direct communication with god so they quake when the shakti enters them they quake usiliya unko quakers bolte they quake they actually wo hilne lagta hai because of course like she herself said very often people are faking so they have this group meetings where they wait for the shakti to descend they call it the spirit of god but it's basically ganga and then the person will do the pravachan that the group requires or whatever so that's the quaker methodology but for her the intervention of somebody else was an intolerable i said yes you are right because you know that whole aspect came up because the person who created the society of friends which are what the quaker actually you know their, their aspect of christianity is called he understood that the priests are the biggest nuisance in christianity so he didn't want i said we also know that the pujari the pandits <laughs> the dakshina seeker we also know that but the guru is different and without parampara without parampara these things all dry up in the air the parampara the reason why the parampara has always survived the reason why the parampara has always had the greatest impact is in every generation the guru repeats that shiva story the descent of the ganga in every generation the guru takes the shakti on to his or her head and then releases it according to the capacity of the disciple so that is the reason the parampara that is it is a not even a myth it is an ongoing reality it is something that is happening all the time the descent of the ganga is something that is happening all the time even what we do in our meditation that is also a form of descent of the ganga well i am the hollow bamboo and i let the energy flow through me exactly the descent of them so when she comes from heaven she is mandakini ganga in the pure sattvic vibration is mandakini ganga in the rajasic earth vibration is ganga ganga in the tamasic patala vibration is alakna not three different streams and those kind of no so it comes down the energy comes down and of course when the energy descends there you know that there is a little contest between ganga and shiva in the beginning because ganga is really not here she like i can sweep this person away and shiva basically traps in the jata in the head and then releases it later now again that's a very interesting story because there are certain yogic truths in how the shakti comes you do the diksha you are trying to do the transmission and there are certain blockages the shakti comes down the shakti can come down to many people but they are not ready to receive or the shakti comes down and it becomes too much for them or the shakti comes down my understanding of the story is that actually it is not that ganga tried to sweep away shiva it is that bhagirath was just not ready so shiva had to hold it he had to keep that knowledge he had to keep that all those skills all those abilities in his head wait till he was ready and then teach and then teach also it is very symbolic of the wanderings even if you teach people they will still keep wandering around people have 25 different questions for every teaching i am like pehle practice to karo fir sawal karo na <laughs> buddha had a rule you can come and learn from me but for 2 years you are not allowed to ask any questions 
at the end of two years, he would tell everybody, two years are up, please ask questions. Nobody has any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> so that even if the Shakti has descended, Ganga has descended. Immediately don't try to process it. Immediately don't try to understand it. That is what it means when they say the Ganga is wandering in the Jata of Shiva. It takes that much time. It takes that much time to process. It takes that much time to transform. And the Guru, that is why the Guru is necessary because depending on the capacity of the Shishya, depending on the need of the Shishya, that much Shakti can be released. That much Shakti can be released. Now that is that is a tricky game. That is a very tricky game. People don't understand these things, you know. People don't understand these these complexities in the whole. They just feel entitled to learn. Why? Because you are a sincere seeker, do you think you deserve? That is not enough. Just because you are a sincere person, therefore you deserve to be taught. Very disheartening <laughs> So after he releases and now the Shakti is flowing, there is one small, another funny episode where she goes and she destroys the ashram of Janu Rishi. And he gets so mad that he brings her up and holds her inside himself. <laughs> and then Bhagirath has to do a lot of minnat and then he lets her out of the ear and then she is known as Janvi. From she is known as Janvi because of that. Now that again is a very allegorical or a symbolical way that when the original guru of the parampara is no longer there, the Shakti goes to some other teacher. He assimilates that teaching in his way, in his style, Shiva released from top of the head. That means direct transmission. Upper chakra. He is releasing from the ear. The different chakra altogether. So you know, very often if you don't learn what you have to learn from the, the original person, you may have to learn from somebody else. And he has a different style. Now you need to accommodate to, it happens all the time, it happens all the time that there are disciples and they could not attain while the Guru was alive, so then the Guru has a problem because now he has to check, okay, who has the Rinanu Bandhan amongst the teachers now that I can send my people. There was this guy called Gurdjieff in uh, Europe, he was a Russian, he was a weird, weird fellow in the early parts of the 20th century. He was a genuinely awakened guy, but pagal tha and he had very peculiar ways of teaching, but a really authentic master. And he had tons of students and one day he just got tired and he dropped his body. And all those people in old age, they turned up with, at Rajneesh's place. And Rajneesh used to know, okay, Gurdjie of person, yeah, okay, come. So that also happens. When you become a guru, then you have to help those who have gone before you, you know, and they say, okay, I'm going to be sending this person to you. Please take care of them because I couldn't finish it. They couldn't move. So these, these stories used to be teaching tools. You know, I, I explained, you know, the mythological stories used to be teaching tools. So by this whole descent of the Ganga, Ganga, Dhara, Shiva, Trailoka, Patagamini, all those kind of things, certain interior yogic processes used to be taught. Now people in meditation would come to all this. I learnt all this by myself. Nobody ever told me these things. When I look at a story nowadays, I understand the interior. Then I realized it is very difficult for most people. I have to speak. That is what one of my Guru Bhai said. She said, our teacher doesn't open the mouth only, so you are the mouth for the group. You know, <laughs> knowledge. 
knowledge comes through. You have to open up and see it. So it's a very uh, interesting thing, you know, because where are the ashes of Bhagirata's ancestors? Patalme. Ashes of your ancestors means all the vasana samaskaras that you have got from multiple lifetimes. Multiple genetic conditionings, multiple karmic conditionings. Where are your vasana samaskara? Loh chakra. Loh chakra, subconscious, mein rehta hai, patal. Mein rehta hai. So the Ganga has to go <laughs> to patala. It has to clean up your conditionings, it has to clean up your vasana samaskara. That is the meaning that the Ganga went to the Patala, not that there was a king called Bhagiratha and <laughs> <you know. laughs> maybe there was, maybe there wasn't. That is not the point. The point of the story is just because you have been activated, just because the Shakti is now descending, just because the Shakti is transforming you, just because you found the Guru, that doesn't mean that the story is over. Patal tak jana parta hai. You have to go to your subconscious layers of mind. And that is where the real spiritual work happens. It has to clean up all that. It has to make all that conscious. It has to erase all those countless lifetimes of programming. All those countless vasana samskaras have to be erased. All those patterns of being, all those patterns of interaction, the Shakti has to go down to the deepest level, wipe it clean. Then the descent of the Ganga is complete, otherwise it is, <laughs> it is incomplete. And that is why they say, if you enter the Ganga, then your karma is over. It doesn't mean that you go to Allahabad or Prayag and you jump into dirty, filthy water <laughs> and all your karmas go. No, it means if the Shakti descends, you are in the parampara, there is a Guru, you are doing your sadhana, you have expanded your capacity to receive Shakti, then Shakti can flush you completely. Then, once it goes to your patala, which is your subconscious mind, and cleans up all the ashes of your ancestors. Aapke sare vasana samaskara, all your conditioning, all your habits, all your negativity, all your multiple ways of reincarnating in similar, all your renanubandhans. Then you have taken the actual Gangasana. So by going to, when there is Kumbha Mela, yes, the energy is better at that way and it helps. And it's not because you've gone into the water, it's because there are so many enlightened people present physically in the Kumbha Mela that you're getting benefit. It's not because you went into the water. The real yogis don't even do, they sit by themselves and they do the, they reenact the entire Kumbha Mela episode, they know what to do. But there is a deeper, some other time I'll tell you what the Kumbha Mela actually means, you are not ready for it. Three, four years of Kriya then maybe, there is a deeper meaning to the whole Kumbha Mela story. The real yogis don't need to go there, they go there because it is a way when if you have that many enlightened people, then it will create tremendous possibilities for everybody coming and even for them. Before the Chinese invasion, this used to be very common. On Buddha Purnima day, 500 masters would gather on a particular plateau in Tibet. And for one hour, Buddha would be physically present with them. Just one. If there weren't 500, only the energy body would be present. Physical presence was not possible. So the Kumbha Mela is similar. If that many masters can come to a place like that, because a place does have good vibration, 
that many masters can come simultaneously and all the work today with all the bhida i wonder <laughs> but the benefit you get from these places is not because you entered the water you can do much better by sitting at yourself and there is that sacred time to enter the water if you are doing meditation at that time immense benefits you get vijay dashmi there is always vijay mohara there is i posted on the yeah. Yeah. you do a meditation you do a havana at that time much greater benefit than all the kirtans that you will do on previous days so these were the they used to protect all this knowledge also they used to protect all this knowledge from the non serious people so instead of explaining the whole story straight out they would tell it in a mythological way but now people are educated and reasonably intelligent we are not a predominantly gavaru people any more even though the mindset is still so you know <laughs> so it's time now to start saying all these things openly you know, because especially in elephant uh, the sculpture the gangadhar shiva is so fantastic and that ganga is done in such detail on his head you know? and i go there and it's so tragic because the guides are all saying that is the three holy rivers ka sangam what does shiva care about the three holy rivers <laughs> so the entire purpose of that sculpture whatever that sculpture is supposed to teach you is totally been forgotten you know it is massively funny thing to, massively funny thing to see because even the sculptures in the caves in those caves they are done in sequence there is a way to go in sequence people would spend couple of years there they would meditate per sculpture one in front of each sculpture in sequence and then the sadhana would be over so it was a way to do it there was a way to do it sometime either when we go to because the exact same cave is there in elora also same basic or same except that it's very ugly this is one of the masterpieces of world art the ones in elora are very ugly but the basic sculpture is the same it's the same sequence of sculptures so there is a way to enter that cave and then come out there is a way to enter the cave there is a way to engage with each one of the sculptures learn what you need to learn and then move forward It's a very interesting process. We have forgotten everything. Again, that is not something that is written in any book. It is something that in my meditation the knowledge came. Okay, so this is what you do in the Kevacha. So that Ganga Dhara Shiva especially is one of the real masterpieces of sculpture. Such a beautiful sculpture, mother. Elephanta, the quality of the sculpture there. You have to go to Rome or Greece. the time of the renaissance of the greek sculptures to have similar quality of sculpture just fantastic stuff nobody even bothers people have lived their whole life in mumbai with a big elephant tag in it was well that one not that there is any shakti left anymore over there but you know the basic idea was so fantastic the basic idea was so fantastic because they wanted a place where all four elements would be there earth water fire air simultaneously the fire they would create but it's an island no? okay. just by the sea and it's in a gufa no? so that whole earth water fire that was should be simultaneously ho raha tha and there was this progression there was this magnificent progression it's a whole philosophy it's a whole it was a sadhana people would go and live over there and they would go sculpture by sculpture till they were done so there was a whole way to we had all these unique ways to transform people today unfortunately all of them have come they all dwindle now people like me people in deep meditation are rediscovering all these old methods but even now hardly 5% is being rediscovered 95% is gone but that 5% is still awesome whatever is there is still awesome so that is the whole descent of the ganga that is what that whole ganga dhara shiva represents now i had said also that you know that ganga is actually the mother of kartikeya of skanda so ganga is not a wife of shiva but a shakti parvati is wife and shakti but 
Ganga is just the Shakti of Shiva. So that is why his power comes out fully in Kartikeya. So, now people have all these odd things that he is married and he carries a woman on his head, you know. <laughs> we have all these relationships and so, when I was in my childhood, I remember there was a song, in Calcutta, a Bengali song and they were like, Shiva is always suffering from cold because Ganga is constantly flowing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, I don't mind all that, it's just amusing. <laughs> but, but you know, not to understand that Shiva is the only person who can keep the Shakti at that higher level. He can keep the Shakti at that chakra above the head. Nobody else can. That is the meaning of the Ganga on the top of the head. We can't. We can't keep the Shakti over. But, this up, koi samajta hai nahi hai, you know, there is a whole way. Nowadays, if I see a murti, I immediately know what the murti is teaching. Every murti was an entire teaching in itself. Every murti had certain specific, particular things to communicate. One can only be sorrowful for the culture. But it's okay, at least this way, slowly, slowly, maybe all this is coming back up soon. But it's very tragic because it has to be all painfully rediscovered. All these secret places, somebody has to go and meditate and painfully rediscover. So, the paramparas all break and shatter and die. And what are left today are all these limited ashram sadhanas, which is the other problem. Descend of the Ganga, you don't need to be in any kind of ashram, you don't need to be. It's something that can happen at every time. The important thing is the Alaknanda. When the Ganga becomes the Alaknanda and goes into the subconscious, goes into Patala, that is the most powerful. That aspect of Shakti is the most powerful. The Ganga rides this fabulous animal, no? Makara, it is neither a crocodile nor a fish. Very odd, not a serpent, it's like something, all three together. Crocodile, fish, serpent, they are all symbols of your unconscious. They are all symbols of all the, the earlier stages of evolution. Fish, serpent, crocodile are all the most ancient stages of evolution. All the vasana samaskara, all the conditioning, all the animalistic tendencies. She writes that, that is her vahana. So if the Shakti actually releases into your life, all those things will be made conscious, which is not a pleasant process, let me tell you. (laughs) It's a very uncomfortable process, but growth can only happen when you are out of your comfort zone. Growth cannot happen when you are comfortable. Growth can happen only when you are uncomfortable. So the way we used to structure these things, You know, this whole business of vahanas, for instance, every devta, every form had a vahana. That also has many deep... You look at the vahana and you know what... Even the giants know. Parashnath, he has the snake. Kundalini. Mahavira, he has lion. Intellect. Lion is a symbol of the intellect. Just looking at the vahana, you know where the vibration of the teaching is coming from. So, if you are a person who would prefer the Kundalini path, it is better for you to have a Parashnath Murti than a Mahavirta Murti. So, yes, the Vahan would actually tell you, is this appropriate for you? Is this something that will work for you? These were the, these were the deeper sort of I don't like to use the word esoteric, but yes, that is the thing. the deeper esoteric. So we need to be aware of all these things. More importantly, we need to teach our children all these things because our culture is just dying all around us and it is just... People keep telling me, I am like, why should I care about the culture when the culture doesn't care about me? (laughs) 
we need to explain all these things in a sensible manner you know instead of the supernatural silly manner that these things are communicated you know because the vahana looks odd there is an elephant god with an elephant said he is riding a mouse there is kartikeya he has got a peacock you know, you know like somebody has got a lion somebody has got a bull somebody they all the vahana is all look odd and there is one aspect of kali she is riding on a naked human being <laughs> naravahini so all that is symbolic it tells you what kind of shakti is flowing through that particular murti through that particular yantra what kind of sadhana you can do with this particular form nobody has any clue nobody has any okay trip but murti is and the whole form aspect of god is really remarkable it took it to a level of sophistication and a level of instant transformation that cannot be even thought of but you need to do the correct murti puja you do the murti puja because that's what is always being done in your family that one you need to do the correct kind of murti puja which is again and again you need the guru you need that shiva representative because he can tell you. आप कुछ कर जाओगे फायदा भी होगा लेकिन बाद में वो प्रॉब्लमेटिक बिकॉज यू नो इट इज नॉट रियली इन एट टू यू बाई चूजिंग दैट पर्टिकुलर फॉर्म ऑफ मूर्ति या प्रिवेंटिंग दैट गंगा फ्रॉम बिकमिंग अलग गंगा ब्लॉकिंग देर आर मल्टीपल देर आर मल्टीपल देर आर मल्टीपल वेज टू लुक एट दिस देर आर मल्टीपल वेज टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस वी शुड लुक एट ऑल स्टोरीज लाइक दैट वट इज द स्टोरी ट्राइंग टू टीच Shiva took the Ganga on his head. Very famous painting, very famous. You know, Sir Calendar, they are both there. But Shiva is always taking the Ganga on his head. Like perfect, he is constant. <laughs> as long as there are people requiring Shakti, that has to be done. That has to be done. So that is basically what Ganga Dhar of Shiva, the descent of Ganga, is. That is Ganga Dharma. Shiva means auspicious. So Ganga ka dhar jab bhane lagta hai, so auspicious hi. That is Ganga Dharma Shiva. Yes, Sarvam Shiva. 